Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an awesome geometry puzzle. An isosceles triangle, a semicircle with radius 1, and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a 3x2 rectangle as shown. Find r. Great, at this point if you want, pause the video or continue to watch. Alright, let's get started. Now, I'll be making some connections as always, right? So let's go ahead and drop a perpendicular here which would basically be the height of the triangle. And I know that this is a two, right? Because that's given, it's a two by three rectangle. Okay, what, if we, what else do we know? Well, we know that the base of the rectangle is three, so, and the radius of the semicircle is one, one. So we have one left, so this means these little pieces here is gonna be one half each. Great. And we also know that the radius of the circle is R, so we can actually go ahead and make a connection here which we don't have to continue, by the way, because there's no other circle that they're tangent to. I'm gonna stop there. And then also I'll be dropping another perpendicular here, which will be extremely helpful. All right, that's another one that I'm gonna use. Okay, cool. Now, what do we know? We know that the radius of the circle is R, so it's R, R, R everywhere. This is one. All right, what else do we know? This is a right triangle, and obviously this is no longer one, so let's go ahead and clean that up and let's rename it. Uh, how about I call this X? So then this piece here will be one minus X. Is that good? Okay, awesome. Now, what is so good about that? Well, we're gonna be doing a little bit more work here. That's not it because as is, uh, we're not gonna be able to find uh, R and X. We do need to find both. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a very interesting fact here. So I'm going to uh, just connect these. As you know, this tangent line is going to be perpendicular, right, to the radius. And what do we know? We know that these two segments are equal in length. But notice that this is 1 minus x plus 1 half. What does that tell you? This is equal to 3 halves minus x. Awesome. So I know that length, and this length is going to be the same because they are congruent. Awesome. So then, if I can find the total length and subtract it, I'm able to find this one, which is going to be, again, super duper important. Awesome. How do I find that? Okay, here's how I'm going to find it. Well, it's the Pythagorean theorem, basically, right? <laughs> I know the legs. I know the base and the height. So it's kind of like this. 1 over 4, which is 1 half squared, plus 2 squared, and the square root of that. That's going to be square root of 17 over 4, and that should be root 17 over 2. So that's the whole thing. If I subtract 3 halves minus x from it, right, this one, then I should be getting this piece. So that piece there, let's call that y. y is going to equal, and I'll, you'll, you'll see in a little bit why I need y. This is r. y is going to equal the square root of 17 over 2, right, minus 3 halves minus x. In other words, I can write the y as square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 plus x. Beautiful. So I was able to express y in terms of x, which is nice, so that I end up with two variables, because that's what I want. Okay, now, we're going to make a super, super crucial connection here. Let's go ahead and make that now. And it's going to look like this. We're basically connecting the center of the circle to one of the vertices of the isosceles triangle. And why are we doing that? Because we want to use Pythagorean theorem one more time. Awesome. Now look at this piece here. Okay. That blue segment, right? That blue segment is the hypotenuse for two right triangles, which means that they're sharing the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared applies to both of the triangles. But what is the height of this triangle here? Well, the height is 2 minus r. Because the whole thing is 2, I subtract r from it. What's the base? 1 minus x. What's the base of the other triangle? r. What's the height? y. So you got everything you need. Let's go ahead and write down our equation. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to say. So I get, and let me go to a lighter color maybe. Something like this. Yeah, that looks good. 
Okay, so what I'm trying to say is the hypotenuse 2 minus r squared plus 1 minus x squared, which is hypotenuse squared, is equal to r squared plus y squared. Beautiful. But I know the value of y, so let me go ahead and substitute that. So this gives me 2 minus r squared plus 1 minus x quantity squared equals r squared plus y squared, which can be written as square root of 70 minus 3 over 2 plus x squared. Awesome. But notice that this is just one equation, but we have two variables. You can expand it, you can do anything, but you can't solve for r and x separately. So you do need another equation, and that's going to come from here. Where is that going to come from? Well, there's one triangle that we haven't considered at all. Do you see it? Okay. If you don't, I'm going to shade it for you. Here we go. That's the other triangle we're going to be using. And together, these two are going to give us what? A nice result. And you'll be amazed at the result. So keep watching. Stay tuned. Awesome. So what am I going to write? I have the base, which is x. The height is 2 minus r. And the uh, hypotenuse is r plus 1. So we're just going to write the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and do that with a different color. Maybe this one. Okay. So that's going to look like x squared plus 2 minus r squared equals 1 plus r squared. Awesome. x squared plus 2 minus r squared equals 1 minus, I mean 1 plus r squared. Okay, cool. Now what do we have? We have two equations. And how many variables do we have? We have two variables. Awesome. Now, here's what you can do. It may or may not be the best way to do it, but I'm just thinking. Okay, from the second equation, the yellow one, you can isolate x squared. r squared is going to cancel out. So you can get x squared in terms of r. And then you can square it both sides and get x in terms of r. Then you can substitute that here and here. So you're going to get a single equation in R, and then you can just kind of work it out, solve it as a quadratic. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little painful, but yes. Okay, that's going to be super painful, actually. Okay, another method is the following. You can go ahead and subtract these two equations side by side, and the good thing is 2 minus R quantity squared is going to cancel out. X squared minus 1 minus X squared. Uh, let's see, X squared is going to cancel out, so you're going to end up with 2X minus 1 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, r squared is going to cancel out. You're going to have 2r plus 1 minus something squared. So, it's not super bad, you know. You can still solve for it, but guess what? I'm going to save you all this trouble. And I'm going to give you the solution for free. Okay? Isn't that cool? Okay. So, I'm going to save you all the trouble, and uh, you don't need to worry about it. I'm going to give you the result. And thanks to Wolfram Alpha, we are able to find the answer without too much pain. Right? Okay. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and write it down. And I'm going to write it down for you. Let's see. What color should we pick? I think that's a good one. So, based on these two equations, again, like I said earlier, you can isolate x squared from the second one. Okay? You're more than welcome if you want to try it. Isolate the x squared. Plug it into the first one. x and x squared. And then you should get the result. But yes, it's going to be painful. Trust me, it is. Or you can subtract these two equations side by side and try to simplify that way. And then let me know how that goes. I mean, if you get the same result or which method is better, easier, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that one. But here comes the solution. Ta-da! All right. So based on these two equations, the radius of the blue circle is equal to 12 times the square root of 17 minus 12 minus the square root of 534 plus 90 times the square root of 17 all over 4 times the square root of 17 minus what a result, right? Okay, so basically, based on 
my calculations, quote unquote, this is the result. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.